Yes, I will accommodate your learning style. Yes, I will accommodate your learning difference. No, I will not accommodate your rude behavior. teachers, welcome to the Teacher's Playbook. My name is Melanie Howell and I have been a classroom teacher for more than 20 years, so my opinions here are based on my experience. My hope for this channel is that a glimpse into my teaching experience will give you the inspiration for a new idea of your own. If you find this video helpful, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Okay, so today's topic is classroom management, everybody's favorite topic. And I've said this, I know, every time I say it, nobody gets into teaching because they want to manage behavior. But if you don't manage behavior, you won't really get to teach. You got to get a handle on classroom management. So I've done a lot of research over the years on different theories, different strategies, you know, everything from rewards to consequences, everything. And the one thing I find all the gurus agree on, consistency is the foundation of classroom management. Don't turn the video off yet. I know that's not like earth shattering rocket science, but here's what I wanna say that's different. Yes, they say consistency is the foundation, but so many of these experts never really elaborate to say consistency of what exactly? What kind of consistency are we talking about? And as a younger teacher, I always just thought that meant consistency in the way I set up my management plan, in the way I hand out the consequences the same way every time. But really, it's a lot more than that. And I don't mean to overwhelm you, but it's consistency in everything. If you can set up a classroom environment that's based on routine and consistency, then you set up a classroom environment that feels safe. Let's face it, there are a lot of adults that when you throw change at them, it rocks their boats. That's true for kids. So you can't have them turn their homework in over here one day and then say, hey, today, let's all turn our homework in over here. Not because it upsets them, but just because you've made a change and you have given them one more reason to turn to a neighbor and say, what did she say? What did she say? What are we doing? And that's what you're trying to avoid. You're trying to avoid those disrespectful side conversations. In the first week of school, it's true. You have to make some changes to figure out how your classroom is gonna work. <laughs> Perfect example, I have these cubbies that hang on the wall in my classroom. And last summer I bought some Lakeshore Learning, like some of those plastic tubs, you know, so flexible seating and they could put their books in there. So what did I do? I thought, wow, won't it be convenient if I put these on top of the cubbies they already have? Well, guess what? School started, the kids showed up, and not all the kids are tall enough to reach up there, so we had to make a change. But again, that change happened in the first five days of school, and that's sort of your grace period. I, in my mind, that's my grace period. To elaborate on my list of things you have to learn to be consistent about, I made a list. I hope you don't mind. My list includes consistent in the way you pass out papers, collect papers, where they put their water bottles, where they put their lunch boxes, where they turn in their homework. Here's a hard one. Consistency in the way they line up. Yes, you have to plan that for them. I know you don't think you do. You think, oh no, my kids are in fifth grade. They're 10 years old. They should be able to line up. Yeah, they should. But if you really want it without any problems and without all the extra talking, you have to set up a system and they have to learn to follow the system. Otherwise, they're gonna do it their own way and their own way involves lots of talking. Consistency in your bathroom expectations, lunchroom expectations, library, music class, art class, when we're in the gym, when we're in assembly. Yes, your entire teaching life requires consistency. Dealing with little people and little people need routine. They feel safer when you have a routine and they know what's expected of them. Plus, like I said before, you don't want to 
create confusing situations so that they have to turn and talk to each other to ask what's going on. But consistency isn't just about consistently giving the consequence to the child that's created the problem. You have to be consistent because the rest of the class needs to see you being fair and consistent. By consistently giving your consequences, you are also creating that safe environment that they all need. So now maybe you're asking, but Melanie, you said that the latest neurological research says that novelty is so important. Novelty primes the brain for learning. And now you're telling me my whole day has to be consistent. Yeah, that's pretty much it. The novelty comes in only for lessons. Novelty is how you kickstart your lesson plan because that will be an attention grabber. Novelty will help your kids learn the content you're trying to teach once you get your classroom management under control. Consistency, being consistent all day, being consistent in the way you execute your consequences for your behavior management plan. But where does mercy come in? Mercy is a tough one because let's face it, I've been preaching you need to be consistent. But sometimes situations come up and you need to show mercy. Mercy is something teachers also need to model and understanding is something teachers also need to model. So how, what does it look like? What does mercy look like? Mercy is when I know something's off and something's different and I ask you to come in the hall and we have a private conversation. Mercy doesn't happen in front of everybody. You know, it's mercy is understanding that maybe the student had a tough morning at home and needs some time to, just to decompress and take a breath before the rigors of school started. Mercy is the child who has anxiety and forgot a math book and is so upset that he doesn't have his math homework or whatever the case may be. Mercy is, is the teacher being honest and saying, okay, I understand that this was a little different for you, but here's where consistency comes in. You just say, let's count this as your warning. Bam, I was just consistent and showed mercy and was understanding. And it can happen, so. If you're feeling frustrated with behavior management as I have been this week, hence this video. This video actually helped me with a lot of self-reflection about my own classroom management and I have decided that I am my own worst enemy. And how I do that is I give too many warnings. That's what I've decided. I give you the look. I don't say anything. I just give you the look. That's a warning. I maybe do no words again, just a signal or a sit down or take it down, you know, just some kind of hand signal. That's a warning. Close proximity, still haven't said anything, just close proximity. That's a warning. I mean, technically, I've already given three warnings. They might not see that they've already, well, let's face it, they don't see that they've already had three warnings, three nonverbal warnings before I get to the point where I'm like, Argh! I am my own worst enemy. But again, with your normal disruptions, interruptions, side conversations, those are the things you have to take control of yourself. I hate to end this video on such a downer. <laughs> or maybe it's good because it'll help you realize, all right, I do have control and I am taking control of this behavior management. <laughs> if you found this video at all helpful, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Thanks guys. See you in the next video.